10 Tips for Summit Night Success Summit night on Mount Kilimanjaro is definitely the most challenging part of climbing Kilimanjaro. The ascent to the summit, followed by the descent to the last campsite, is a very long day, comprised of about 6 to 8 hours up and 4 to 6 hours down. But this can take much longer depending on your hiking speed. Here are 10 of my personal tips that will make your summit night a little bit easier. Number 1. Stage your summit gear the night before. The typical itinerary for the summit push begins around midnight. What you don't want to do is have to rush while organizing everything you need and to put on all of your layers. That's going to cause a lot of unnecessary stress and increase the chances of you forgetting something essential. So lay out all of your clothing and pack your snacks, water, and gear the evening before your summit attempt. Organize your belongings in the same manner as you have been for the entire trip so everything is easy to find. You don't want to wonder which pocket or stuff sack an item is in while hiking in the dark. I like to sleep wearing most of my summit clothing, so all I need to do is put on my top layers and grab my backpack. Number 2. Choose the right kind of snacks. Due to the icy temperatures, certain types of snacks can become nearly inedible. So carry some snacks that are not going to be affected by the cold. Anything with a high water content can freeze. Trying to eat a Snickers or a protein bar is going to feel like gnawing on a brick. Cookies, nuts, jerky, trail mix, and dried fruit are all good snacks for the ascent. Number 3. Avoid caffeine before the climb. Because we start the summit so early, we also go to bed early, around 7 o'clock. As you might imagine, it's hard to fall asleep due not only to the time, but also the altitude and the excitement of summit day. So I'd suggest that you either reduce your caffeine intake or steer clear of caffeine and any other stimulants altogether on this day. If you can get two to three hours of sleep, you'll have more energy. It's going to make your summit easier. But if you can't sleep at all, it's okay. Many people don't get any sleep and still make it to the top. Number four, don't over tighten your shoes. One thing people do when trying to avoid cold feet is that they lace their footwear really tight thinking that it will trap warm air in the shoe and keep the cold air out. This is a mistake and is actually counterproductive. What happens is that lacing your footwear tightly, especially across the top of the foot, restricts blood flow to the toes. This cuts off the circulation and leads to colder feet. So tie your shoes securely and firmly, using normal pressure, not too loose or too tight. Number 5. Carry water bottles upside down. Nighttime temperatures on the way to the summit vary between 20 to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the water you carry can freeze. I hear many climbers say that you can keep your water bladder functional by blowing the water back into the tube. In my experience, this isn't practical. First, it takes too much effort to do this after every sip. Second, if you don't get all the water out of the tube, it will freeze. And last, other components, such as the valve and the cap, can freeze. So I personally rely solely on water bottles for the ascent. Now, water bottles also can freeze, but if you carry them upside down, any ice that forms will occur at the top, away from the cap, allowing you to access the liquid water. Number six, layer your clothing correctly. Typically on summit night, hikers wear four to six layers on the upper body. These layers consist of one to two base layers, one to two soft shell or fleece jackets, a waterproof jacket, and possibly a down jacket. The order in which I describe these layers is exactly the sequence you should be wearing them, with the base layers first, followed by the soft jackets and the waterproof shell, and topped off by the down jacket. Let me repeat that. The down jacket goes over your hard shell. It is the outermost layer. Hikers and backpackers get riled up about this statement, but this is absolutely standard practice in alpine mountaineering. The rationale is that your down jacket is only worn during the coldest of conditions, below freezing temperatures. So keeping the down jacket dry is not a big concern as it is too cold for rain or snow. The most common scenario is that you would be hiking to the summit with your hard shell as the outer layer. You put your down jacket on during rest breaks to stay warm when you stop moving. This is the first thing you should do. Before you even sit down, put your down jacket on over all your existing layers. Then, you can handle other gear adjustments, eat and drink. Just before you start hiking again, take off the down jacket and stow it in the top of your day pack. 
This approach ensures you'll stay warm during breaks without overheating while you hike. Number seven, use trekking poles. Trekking poles offer real advantages when climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. They provide extra support, helping to maintain balance and reduce the risk of falls. By engaging your arms, trekking poles distribute the workload across your body. This conserves energy, making it easier to sustain the slow, steady pace needed to reach the summit. On a steep descent, they reduce the strain on your legs, joints, and feet. Therefore, I highly recommend using trekking poles throughout your climb. But if there's one day where you reap the most benefits from the poles, it's on the way to the summit and especially on the way down. Number eight, don't quit at half time. When undertaking a challenging endurance activity such as climbing Kilimanjaro, individuals often experience various psychological stages. These stages can sometimes overlap or occur in a different sequence. But a common progression goes something like this. Excitement, anxiety, doubt, fatigue, wanting to quit, determination, renewed focus, relief, and triumph. The initial excitement is driven by adrenaline and enthusiasm. As the challenge progresses, anxiety and doubt can set in, influenced by mental and physical demands of the activity. Fatigue then becomes a major factor, requiring determination to push through. The temptation to quit often arises when the effort seems overwhelming, but many find a renewed focus or second wind that helps them continue. Finally, reaching the goal brings a profound sense of relief and triumph. Understanding these stages allows you to anticipate them so you're not taken by surprise if feelings of doubt, fatigue, and wanting to quit arise. I've noticed that this happens to people about halfway to the summit, between 3 and 4 a.m. This is when the effects of sleep deprivation, hiking uphill, cold weather, and high altitude become oppressive. When the guide says we are halfway there, it can really take the wind out of people's sails. The halfway mark makes it a psychologically acceptable turnaround point for people who are thinking about quitting. It feels more justifiable to quit here than at the start or near the summit. But don't quit here. Your mind is trying to trick you. Turning around at the halfway point means you still have to descend to high camp before you get relief. In about the same time it takes you to reach your tent, you can reach the summit. The sunrise is a big morale booster. You can finally see the beautiful views, the temperature rises, and the excitement of being at the summit and seeing the glaciers gives you a burst of energy. Then the descent to camp is relatively fast and easy. Therefore, don't turn around at the halfway point. Find your determination and a renewed focus to continue. Number nine, make gear adjustments at the summit. When you reach the summit, it's a time to celebrate with your teammates. You want the obligatory photo in front of the Uhuru point sign, proving you just climbed the highest mountain in Africa. However, don't overlook the long descent ahead. Before you start hiking down, take some time to prepare by making necessary gear adjustments. Remove your warm hat and headlamp, replacing them with a cap and sunglasses. Apply sunscreen to expose skin, reapply lip balm, extend your trekking poles, and perhaps shed a layer or two. Be mindful of how you feel throughout the descent and continue to make adjustments as needed. Remember that the descent is going to take many hours, so fix any issues then and there before it becomes a bigger problem. Number 10, tighten laces before descent. In a previous tip, I said to tie your shoes normally for the summit, but for the descent, you'll want to tighten them up. Having a tighter fit will help keep the wraps out of your shoes, but more importantly, it will reduce the movement of your foot in the shoe as you go down. Toe bang is a name for a common hiking injury where toes repeatedly hit the front of the boot during descents, leading to bruising, pain, and sometimes the loss of toenails. To prevent this, your foot needs to be secure to stop it from sliding forward. Performing a heel lock with your lacing will help heel slippage and reduce excessive movement. Some climbers use thick, heavy-duty expedition weight socks to battle the cold during the summit. I'm not a fan of them on Kilimanjaro, as I believe they have the potential to do more harm than good. Unless you account for the use of thick socks when you size your footwear, they will alter the overall fit, making your shoes or boots tighter, less comfortable, and more prone to rubbing. 
They reduce the space in the toe box, making toe bang more likely, and they also retain more moisture. This, along with reduced circulation, can actually make your feet feel colder. Collectively, these factors are a recipe for foot problems. The key to keeping your feet warm is to first make sure your core is warm. When your core temperature drops, your body's physiological response to prevent hypothermia is to reduce blood flow to the extremities, which is why the hands and the feet are the first to get cold. But if you've properly layered from top to bottom, you shouldn't have to do anything special to keep your feet warm. That means no foot warmers, no doubling up on socks, or wearing heavy socks. I wear toe sock liners plus lightweight hiking socks and my feet have never been cold. That said, if you're not convinced and you're dead set on wearing thick socks for the summit, make sure you try them out with your intended footwear on a long hike with a substantial downhill section. Be sure that they don't impede the fit of your shoes or boots to a point of discomfort. Here's a recap of my 10 personal tips for summit night success. Stage your summit gear the night before. Choose the right kind of snacks. Avoid caffeine before the climb. Don't over tighten your shoes. Carry water bottles upside down. Layer your clothing correctly. Use trekking poles. Don't quit at half time. Make gear adjustments at the summit. Tighten laces before descent. I'm Kevin with Ultimate Kilimanjaro. Visit our website for more information on climbing Africa's highest peak. Join our Facebook discussion group to talk about all things Kilimanjaro and please like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you on the summit.